another strategy that you can use when you are working out. And uh, this is called finding your friends. So when we, this is, this is really important for people who have symptoms. So if you leak or you have prolapse or you have pain, this strategy is something really important that you can use to help your body adapt and move away from those symptoms and improve your symptoms. So for example, I'll just use the analogy for leaking because that's super common. Um, so when we have, when I have somebody that comes in and leaks, the way I explain it, and this is what I was taught through my mentor, Anthony Lowe, he's an Australian um, physical therapist and amazing. Um, and so his analogy that he taught us is your symptoms are a, a farmhouse, okay? And so your symptoms are the farmhouse, your leaking is a farmhouse, and around your farmhouse, sorry, you are the farmhouse, <laughs> your symptoms are the fence around the farmhouse, okay? So you are a farmhouse and your leaking or pain or prolapse is a, is a fence around your farmhouse. The quicker your symptoms come on means the closer your fence line is to your farmhouse, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna create a bigger yard between you and your fence line so that it takes longer and longer and longer for symptoms to occur, right? We wanna re reduce the recurrence of these symptoms. So if I'm my farmhouse and my fence is here, what I wanna do is it doesn't leave me much room until I get to symptoms. Say I leak on f after four jumps, okay? We're doing jump squats in a workout and I leak after four. So then what I'll do is I will um, jump until three jumps. So I'll come right up to that fence line of four jumps, but I won't actually get to that fence line. I won't knock it over and actually cause the symptoms. And let me know if this is confusing because sometimes it can be. It seems really simple in my mind, but I've regurgitated it a lot. So you want to play up and around your fence line, okay, which is your symptoms. So you want to go in that gap in that farmyard right up to the fence, but you don't want to actually knock your fence over, meaning causing the symptoms because it's teaching your body that that's okay. And that's not the response that we want. What we want to do is we want to adapt and teach our body that it's okay to come up to those symptoms, to play right around where they almost happen, where you almost leak or you almost have pain or you almost feel that extra heaviness come on and then we want to back off and then we want to play against the fence a little bit and then we want to back off and we want to keep doing that until we can no longer get to that fence line okay without causing symptoms what that does is if we do that over and over and over it's teaching our body to adapt to that load and that um, response that we want. And what'll happen is after time, that fence line, so the symptoms will get further and further and further out. So instead of leaking at four jumps, now we leak at six, then we leak at eight, then we leak at 10, then it's 20, and then it's 25, and then it's 30, and then before you know it, never. For a lot of people, sometimes leaking never goes away completely, but we can get it to be at a space where people are really comfortable with it. They only leak very sporadically and it's not a big deal. Um, so that, but we have to do it in a specific strategic way because if we're constantly tipping over and causing our symptoms over and over and over again, all it's doing is reinforcing to our nervous system and our body that that's okay. And that's not what we want to do. We want to teach our body that it's okay to get right up to it, but then we're going to respect the signals that our body's giving and we're going to back off. So we're showing our body and our nervous system and our systems that it's in, it's safe, that we're not going to keep crushing it down. We're not going to keep causing it to go past its capabilities. We're going to respect the environment that it's in. And then after long enough, it's going to start adapting because it's going to be like, okay, she's respecting me. I'm safe. I'm going to allow her now to have a bigger fence line, a bigger range where she can go without symptoms. And then we have to readapt now to where it is at that current system and it takes a little bit of time and then the body responds and it adapts and it pushes that fence line further out. So if you have leaking, for example, at four jumps, you would jump three times, maybe even four if you think you can get to four with like, just like, like you basically want to get to the edge of the cliff and then just come right back is kind of an, another way to think about it. You don't want to get to the point where you're like, yeah, I peed. Like, I peed a lot, okay? You want to get to that point where it's like, I had to squeeze to get it. it. It just about came out, but it didn't, okay? Then you stop, and then you rest. And maybe you rest a full minute. Then you try four jumps again. Great, we can get to four again. Then you rest another minute. Then we go back, oh, now I can only get to three. Cool, get to three, wait a minute. Go back, oh, now I can only do two. Cool, then you wait another minute. 
And then you just slowly show your body that you're allowing it to get to that cliff, but you're always coming back from it. You're always giving your body that respect and coming back from um, that symptom before that symptom goes over the cliff, okay? And when we do this time and time and time again, you might actually be surprised at how quickly your body adapts. The problem is, is a lot of people think, well, fuck, I don't want to go to a workout that has, you know, all these jump squats and I have to sit there the whole time and just like wait the whole minute and not work. Well, that's fine. That's your choice. You don't have to do it this way, but just know that you also don't have to ever get better with your symptom, right? So it really just depends on what's important to you. Is it important to you not to leak? Or is it important to you that you get to sweat more in that situation? Or can you opt out and do something less impactful and change the change it and then work on the, the jumps and the fence line analogy outside of the gym when you're at home and doing it on your own? Can you practice this at home? Because it absolutely is something you can do on your own. So if you're leaking or if you have pain, you know, maybe you get um, low back pain when you're doing deadlifts and you can only do so many deadlifts and then all of a sudden it starts hurting. It's the same thing. You do it until you get to that point and then you rest and then you go back and try it again and you just keep going back and forth and back and forth, playing along the fence line, but never crushing the fence line over. So I hope that makes sense. It's a new analogy probably for most of you if you've never worked with me in the first place. Um, people like Bobby and, um, Jen have probably done through this. Uh, I've probably gone through this with you before. Um, but it's a great way to start looking at what the, um, the edges and the, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The limits of your symptoms are. Um, 